once the movie's been on for a while. Sure. Because you're standing there, you don't know anybody. Everybody's saying, good morning, Charlie. How are you? Get, get me a cup of tea. Hello, Mr. You, the star comes on. He's usually a pain in the neck, you know, a bit conceited, and it doesn't talk to you because you've only got a small part. And I've done this. And you stand there, and you're nerve-wracked. And, you, you know, and especially if there's a whole big scene goes on, and then you've got the last line. You may only have one line. You know, and the cavalry comes down the hill, and all the thick beach explodes, you know. And you say, quick, the Germans are crumbing. <laughs> and everybody goes, oh. Shit. One line. One goddamn... Who got this guy? Who, who brought the, the casting director comes in and says, what's the matter? He said, guy can't say one line. But you're standing here, you're saying, Jesus, there's all those troops coming over. It'll take two hours to put the explosives back in. Then the great star says his great long speech absolutely perfectly. And you go, the Germans are crumbing. crumbing. <laughs> is it, can we, and then, then always the actor says, um, we, can, can we post sync that? Would it be all right to do the, and the guy goes, no. <laughs> Got to do it again. Yeah. And that's the hardest thing to do, to be a one day actor. Yeah. Mr. Anderson, Sydney is bursting with creative ideas about your play. I've never seen him so enthusiastic. This young man has written a play, he's an unknown playwright, he sent it to a famous playwright. This famous playwright is on the downward path, he's had nothing but flop plays and he's really written out. And the young man's play is brilliant. And what he's done is arranged that he is going to take the young man's play and kill him. And the wife is watching this and trying to talk him out of killing him. But what the plot actually is, is this. These two are homosexual lovers and have set this up in order to get rid of the wife. And it's very wrong of you to have offered to give it to him. I'm the one in this household whose eyes on the checkbook. I'm going to make a suggestion to you, Sydney. It's going to come as a shock to you, but I want you to give it your grave and thoughtful and earnest consideration. Will you do that? Will you promise to do that for me? Put aside the play you're working on. Yes, put aside the play about Helga Tendorp and how she finds murderers and keys under clothes dryers. Put it aside, Sydney, and help Mr. Anderson with his play. Collaborate with him. That's what I'm suggesting. That's what I think is the fair and sensible and rational thing to do. Death Trap by Clifford Anderson and Sidney Brule. Put aside the drowning wife. I thought it was frowning. Frowning? Well, how much can I move this? Sorry. Yeah, you're all right. That's you're all right. right. Just do it naturally. Put aside yeah. the drowning Don't wife. Don't feel. No, that's, that's yeah, a terrible thing. Feel. Feel. Don't feel restricted. Yeah. You, yeah, yeah. If you can do that. Yeah. Frowning? What do you mean frowning? It's the drowning wife. Yeah. Who ever heard of a title? It's yeah. Scratch your mouth. Yeah. Who ever heard of a title? <laughs> yeah, it's the silliest thing I ever heard. <laughs> <coughs> drowning. Uh, put aside the drowning wife. I thought it was frowning. Frowning. What kind of title would that be? The drowning wife. It will keep, Sydney. People are always interested in psychics who can point at someone and say, that man murdered that man. Put it aside, Sydney, please. Do for Mr. Anderson what George S. Kaufman did for you. Well, that's a very persuasive speech, Myra, and obviously very sincerely felt, though how it must have sounded to Clifford. Uh, wow, I, I suddenly feel as if I'm on the spot. You are. Myra has put you there. As a matter of fact, she's put us both there. Oh, Sydney, I just felt I should bring it up now. <clears throat> May I just say, first of all, I'm, I'm overwhelmed, really honored and staggered that Sidney Brule would actually consider the idea of putting aside one... I mean, there I was in that theater when I was 12 years old, and who would think that someday I'd be standing here weighing we up the chest... We get the gist of this passage. But, but, but the thing is, it's, if I went, it's as if I went to a doctor, one of these world's leading specialists, and he recommended major surgery. Can I just say something? 
when he says, let's enter, let me just sit there for a second here. Let me show you something. You watch, watch that monitor there. Say to, you say to me about the speech about uh, um, when I was 12 years old. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, who would think that I'd be sitting in that theater aged 12 years old and that someday I would have the opportunity to be yes, standing here? Yes, we get the gist of the... Uh... <laughs> right. You see what I mean? I reacted to 12 years old. You know, he's saying, you know, you, um, there's a, but you saw me do it, and I did it in mov movie terms, and because they could see the monitor, they laughed at it, yeah. which is what it, it's there for, you know. It's, um, do it again. Mm. I mean, there I was, sitting in that theater, aged 12 years old, and who would think that someday I'd be standing yes, we, here? Yes, we, we get the gist of the uh, message, Clifford. You know, now he's sitting there a bit teed yeah. off about it. Yeah. You know, not only is she having a go at him, the lover's coming up with... <laughs> <coughs> you know what I mean? So you got, I want to see that pass over your face, you know. You have to listen very carefully to every goddamn thing he says. Because you don't know what the hell he's going to say. Yeah. You know? And, you'd, and he could drop you in it now. Yeah. With one wrong word. He could give the game away to her. Mm. Right. And you've got her on the other side not cooperating properly. Can you know? I just say something about yeah. that? Because just you've got quite get mobile on that. Is that if, if when you've got the camera on you like that and it's that close up and you're concerned about the camera? Yeah, I tell you what. You, no, you don't worry about it. Yeah. 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 And listening, and also, it is, is in the end you kind of think, well, oh, and so the face gets like that. Yes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's because what. I, that's why I stopped so you. you. Your I face know. went like that. No, I know. Yeah. <laughs> you were start, you're starting to get frozen that's into right. that. Mm. But you see, put it put it on me. Now I'm I'm in this close up, right? So I'm listening, but I mean I can't go like that, and I can't go like no, that, no, 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 no. but I can go, yeah. and I can use my eyes, because I'm looking at him, and he says, 12 years old, and you go to Celia. Yes, we, we, uh, yeah, we get the gist of it, uh, Clifford. You know, and, and I'm quite free within that framework, yes, aren't I? Yes. But I can't go like that, you know? You, and if, if you were in a situation where, it's what you did there, you froze, mm. which is why I stopped it mm. and said, let's, if you're in that situation, then you say to the director, how much freedom have I got in here? Yes, and if, if he says, well, it's only a stare and, and it's this close mm. and you can't move an inch, you know, because the man's coming towards you with a knife and I want to get this, then you right. can't move, yeah. you know? Yeah. And you can't go, no. uh, you've got to, but within this framework, it's okay. And the director will accommodate you on that. I mean, any director would. You know, you mm. say, well, don't freeze in there, Ian. Mm. You say, well, I don't feel like I can move. Mm. You can move in this frame. Do that speech again to him, Clifford. Mm. So it's best to ask really what Yeah, you mm. see, always... everybody is there mm. to get the greatest performance from you that you've ever given. Everyone will help. The electrician up there, he will go scrambling along there and get that light absolutely right so that there's a glint in your eye. Everything is done for you. Everything mm. to help you do it right because it is bloody difficult. And everyone knows it. Mm. I just think of some of the more um, serious side of, of, of movie making which might not have occurred to you. Um, one day you're going to be in a studio and a man called the special effects man is going to come up and he's going to say, well, he said, you stand here, he says, and on action we'll be blown out. But don't worry about it because it'll go that way. He said, the roof will come down but don't worry about it because that will go that way. He said, the floor will open up and you'll fall into some water and there's a shark in there but don't worry about it because we've taken all his teeth out. <laughs> It says, and then as you crawl out of the water, a poisonous snake will crawl up your trouser leg. And, but don't worry about it because the, we got an expert from the zoo and he's just milked it. <laughs> and what you say to him, you say, Mr. Special Effects Man, let me see you do it first. And he will say to you, we haven't got the time, you know, I mean, it's, it's 20 past.